We've been sitting up on this ridge line all morning. There's a herd of elk down there we're watching, trying to pick up the right bull for us. Several of them down there just got to get the right one. Oh, there's one right there. Let's see if we can get him. Oh, that's a nice bull. Range it. Range is at 495. Should be an easy shot. All right, let's see what we got. 495 is 2.3 mils. I'm going to favor left edge. Oh, got him. Beautiful bull. Let's go take a look. Oh, man. Would you look at that one? Perfect shot into the 10 inch vital zone. If you're curious what your hunting rifle is capable of, stick around. Well, we didn't exactly get an elk there in the intro, but we did take a very realistic hunting type shot. It's very possible here in the West to find yourself 500 yards from an animal with a 10 inch vital zone. You're set up with your trusty hunting rig, asking yourself, can I make that shot? How far am I comfortable with a shot? Now that's something I'd love to hear in the comments before we get going here. How far do you feel comfortable with your hunting rig? So that's exactly what I wanna explore in this video. Now recently my buddy came out west on an elk hunt where he used this exact rifle to go track elk all over Northern Idaho. When he went home, I asked to borrow it so I could make this video for you because I wanna explore how far can we push a hunting rifle in a target shooting type role. Many times you see dedicated target rifles or dedicated long range rifles shooting to a thousand yards and beyond. It almost looks easy, but equally as often, hunting rifles are overlooked with their effectiveness for target shooting. So in this video, we're gonna take this hunting rifle exactly as it was used recently and see how far we can make hits on practical type targets. So you've already seen in the intro, I made a cold bore shot on a 10 inch plate at 490 yards. From there, we're gonna to go to 100 yards. I'll show you the groups and the zero on the rifle. Then we'll move out to a two thirds type Ipsic at 790 yards, a full size Ipsic at 1100. And then beyond that, you can see we've got plenty of open space. We're just gonna keep pushing the plate out until I can no longer make reliable hits. So I think this one's gonna be pretty fun. Dedicated hunting rifle, how far can you make hits in a target shooting role? So stick around. So before we start shooting, let's take just a quick look at the gear we're gonna run in the video. So for a rifle, we've got an out of the box Vergara Wilderness Ridge rifle and 300 Win Mag. I think this thing is very representative of probably what many of you are running for a hunting rig. And we all know 300 Win Mag is a very capable caliber. It has been for a long time and is solid out to a mile and beyond depending on the bullet that you're using. So that's the rifle. We've got a really nice optics package on this. We've got a loophole Mark 5 HD 3.5 to 18 scope with a TMR reticle. Now I don't have a ton of experience with the new loophole optics, so I'm really excited to see how this one performs at distance. But in the little bit that I've shot the rifle so far, I'm very impressed with the performance. It's sitting on top of a Night Force 20 MOA base, which we need to help push the rifle to distance so we've got enough elevation in the scope to dial it versus having to hold out in space. So that's the optics setup. There's a couple of accessories on the rifles that are must have. So we've got a Harris bipod. You need that for prone shooting. And then there's an anti-cant device here, US Optics, bubble level, which is gonna help me keep that rifle vertical and consistent for those long shots. We don't wanna put any kind of windage error in it unknowingly. And then finally on the stock, my buddy added a cheek piece to help us get a nice consistent cheek weld when looking through the optics. So that's the rifle. For ammo, we're shooting factory federal gold medal match 190 SMK. And this stuff, it pairs well with the twist rate in this barrel. So this barrel is a one in 10 twist, so it's not gonna shoot the heavy stuff very well, but it should shoot really well with a 190 SMK. So this is what we're gonna push to distance. Can't wait to see the performance. So from here, let's move down to 100 yards, check out our groups, our zero and chronograph. So for 100 yards, we'll fire two, three round groups. There's three dots down there. I'm gonna put the first three rounds on the bottom dot and then I'll wait maybe five minutes or so to let the barrel cool to fire the next three round group. So this is the 190 SMK 
federal gold medal match load. I chronographed it just a little while earlier and across five rounds, it's running an average of 29, 26 feet per second with a standard deviation of 22. So not the most consistent ammo, but let's see how it groups on paper at 100 yards. Those three felt good. Let's wait about five minutes and fire another three. Probably been more like 10 minutes. So let's fire another three round group at the top dot. Let's walk down and take a look. So here's my 100 yard target with the Bagara. My first three rounds on the bottom dot. So this was my first round and then my second two stacked on top of the dot. And you can see those are just under an inch and a half. I then put my second set of three rounds on the top dot. And you can see those measure just over an inch. So not too shabby with that lightweight hunting rifle. Some of that horizontal spread is probably me. This thing doesn't settle down in the bag really well. I am going to bump my zero down about a tenth before we stretch out and shoot steel. So let's do that and get after it at distance. So you've already seen me make hits at 490 with this thing on a 10 inch circle. Let's push it a little bit further. Two thirds zipsic at 790. I've dialed up 5.3 mils. I'm going to favor left about three quarters of a mil. Scope is on 15 power. Off the left edge. Let's go half. Impact. 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 And the tacticam fell out. All right, not too shabby. It's 790. Let's push out to 1100 on a full size Ipsic. I've dialed up 9.2 mils. Scope is still on 15 power. I'm going to favor left a half. Like it was just low right. So I'm going to come up a tenth. We're going to go to three quarters. Impact. 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 Eleven hundred. Very capable with the Bergara. Let's push further. My first target down there is a full size Ipsic at fourteen hundred and seventy yards. I know that's sixteen point four mils, so I'm gonna go ahead and dial that on. And 16.4. Yeah, I got a, a decent left to right out here blowing. So I'm going to start with 1.5 mils to the left. Scope is on 18 power. 1.5 to the left. Here we go. Ooh, way high. So I'm gonna call that a mil and a half high. Let's come down to 
15 mils. Windage look good. 15 mils and a mil and a half. Just off that right edge. Let's go to 1.75. Impact. Just off the right edge. All right, I'm going to load up four more. And we'll give it another go. I forgot to mention earlier, this is right where these bullets are going subsonic or transonic. So they're right in that transition. I'm at 15 mils, so I got to adjust my BC to get that accurate, but we've already made one hit. Let's get some more. So I'm going to start two mils left windage. Impact. Just off the right edge. Impact. Ooh, drop just low right. So you can see we're making a decent amount of hits out here at 1470. That's pretty fun. Four more rounds loaded up at 1470. over two mils left. Impact. 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 Just off that right edge. So you can see, I think we made six hits out of 12 rounds at 1470. That's not bad performance. So let's push further. Now let's push out over a mile, 1,820 yards. I put my 30 inch circle down there. The app calls for 26 mils, but because we were high at 1470, I've only dialed 24 into the scope. It's actually pretty interesting. The scope tops out at 26. So if we have to go there, we're going to be right in the ballpark. But right now, I've got 24 mils dialed on. Wind feels like it's calmed down a bit, so I'm going to go 1.5 mils left. All right, 1.5 left. 24 mils, let's look for an impact. Scope is on 18 power. Just short. Windage look good. I'm going to come up a half. 1.5 left. Okay, I don't know if you saw that in the dust, but that fell short. Windage looked good. I'm going to come up with another half. I tried to put that plate down there to, to stop the blast. 1.5 left. Just off the left edge. Ah, hard to see in the dust. Let me let up four more rounds and work on this plate to try to stop the blast and we'll give it another go. Four 
four more rounds loaded up and more steel plates put down under the muzzle to try to stop the blast. Let's give it a go at 1820. I'm going to start 1.5 left. Off the left edge. Let's cut back to bracket the target. Off the left edge. Come back to a mill. Ooh, hard to see in the dust. I'm gonna go right back. Same spot. Drop low. So I'm gonna start. 1.5 mils left and 25 mils of elevation. Here we go. Impact. Not too shabby with a hunting rifle. Let's do it again. Just off the left edge. And this tactic cam is brutal, like bonks you in the head. Got my windage back a little bit. I ah, couldn't tell. Look, that was right there. I'm gonna go back to 1.5 where we made the hit. Impact again. Not too shabby with a Bagara hunting rifle with factory gold medal match 190 SMK over a mile. I don't know about you, but I am super impressed with the performance of this Bagara rifle. This is a sub thousand dollar out of the box hunting rifle that we just made multiple hits all the way out to and over a mile using federal gold medal match factory ammunition. That's awesome by pretty much anyone's standards. It definitely outperformed what I was expecting for the rifle. So just a quick review of what we saw shooting wise, and then we'll move into my thoughts. So we opened the video by making a cold bore hit on a 10 inch plate at 490 yards. The goal there was to represent a hunting type scenario where you've got a beautiful animal, you've got a vital zone, you've got a critical shot, can it perform in that application? And it 100% did. Then from there, we moved out to a two-thirds Ipsic at 790 yards, and we connected three out of four times with relative ease, and that's to be expected with a 300 Win Mag. This is not a hard shot for a 300 Win Mag precision rifle. Next, we moved the full-size Ipsic out to 1,100 yards, where we connected three out of four times, which was very solid performance. Because we did so well there, we then moved this plate out to 1,475 yards, where we connected six out of 12 times, so 50% hit ratio. You can see there's a couple hits up here in the shoulder, and then there's four hits down here in the lower corner. So great performance at 1,475 yards. Because we did so well at 1,475, I thought we should keep pushing the plate out, and I wanted to get over a mile with this rifle. So from there, we moved out to the 30 inch circle where we made a couple of hits, kind of toward the tail end of the string of fire, but two out of 12. That's not too shabby. That's more hits than I expected this rifle to make at that distance. So overall, awesome performance for a hunting rifle that we use in a target application. So real quick, what are my thoughts after shooting this rifle? Well, as I said, I'm very impressed with the performance of the rifle. But that said, this rifle is not fun to shoot more than a handful of rounds at a time. This is a very lightweight rifle designed to be carried through the woods or through the backcountry. I'm used to shooting big, heavy, purpose-built, long-range precision rifles that barely move under recoil and soak up a lot of that recoil. So I could only put maybe 20 rounds per session through this rifle before I started noticing fatigue and really having to struggle to make those impacts. So lightweight, awesome for carrying, not the best for long-range target shooting. Next up, the muzzle brake. This thing is obnoxious. It's got ports all the way around it. When I'm firing up here in these dry conditions, you saw it blew dust back in my face terribly. You saw at the 1,820 yard target, it was so bad we could barely spot our impact. So 
I prefer a brake that only ports out the sides. It does a much better job of controlling the blast off the ground and keeping dust out of your scope, blocking your field of view. Next up, the three round magazine. That was kind of annoying. I like a 10 round magazine, such as the MRAD or a five round in the Ruger Precision Rifle. Once you get on target, you wanna be able to send those rounds before conditions change. And this thing, I only got four cracks at it and I had to stop to reload. So understand it's a hunting reasoning, that's fine. But for target shooting, I did notice that was a little bit of a drawback. From there, I was actually very surprised. This stock actually flexes quite a bit. You can very easily move this rifle in the stock. It is free floated, but you can very easily move that. I expected that stock flex to kind of be annoying or an issue, but I really didn't notice it. Load the bipod, send the rounds, and I was able to make my hit. So overall, there's a couple of annoyances that I found, but that's just because this is a hunting rifle and not a long range precision bolt gun. So that said, let's wrap this video up. I'd love to hear in the comments what your thoughts were. Did this meet your expectations or exceed? I'm gonna have this rifle for a couple of more weeks. I'd love to hear, is there any other content you'd like to see me make with this video? Should I compare it to the MRAD, kind of a hunting rifle versus a long range precision built rifle? I think that would be kind of fun. I thought about doing maybe 300 PRC versus 300 Win Mag, but I'm not sure if this is a fair comparison. So let me know in the comments what you think about that. Now, if you've made it this far, I really appreciate you sticking around. I really hope you enjoyed this content. I got a lot of really cool stuff in the works. I'm really working to grow this channel. We've seen a ton of awesome growth so far, and I thank you for that. You can help me grow this channel by commenting, liking this video, and best of all, subscribing so that you catch up on future content. So it's your interaction that's gonna help me grow this channel. The final place we can interact is through Instagram. I'm there at Mountain Smollett's America. And I'd love to chat with you in the DMs and give you a sneak peek of what I'm working on, share pictures of what's going on, et cetera. It's a great place for interaction. So that said, I hope you enjoyed this video. Stick around because I got a lot of cool stuff in the works. Thank you.